no matter how you do it, there's two things. Number one, this is going to be hard for some people to hear. Own your behavior. This is you. It's you. This is Dave Meltzer with Entrepreneurs, The Playbook, and I have a special guest today, Michael the Moose Mooseburger, ex-professional football player, entrepreneur, author, and one of the most inspirational speakers. Yeah. I used to have a title, the top inspirational speaker you'd never heard of, yeah. and unfortunately now I'm heard of, so I'm going <laughs> to give that moniker oh, over to you. <laughs> After this, you're going to be heard of. Um, so a lot of people don't know who you are, right. um, which is a good thing for now. Yeah. Trust me, there's some good and bad that goes with it. Um, tell me exactly your journey, because it, it's one of the most incredible stories, how you are here today, and an entrepreneur, speaker, and an inspirational uh, person. You had some, you played football at Wake Forest. Yes. And you're playing there, and that's where your whole life kind of changed. It did. It, uh, I was blessed, I grew up, I was one of four kind of the traditional all-American family, right? We weren't rich, we weren't poor, we didn't want for anything, but we were content. So uh, I was fortunate, went to Wake Forest, played football, and uh, was also fortunate to get some looks at the NFL, and the dream was starting to become a reality, right? I had amazing parents, an amazing supportive family, never missed a game. And, and where'd they live? So I'm local, I'm in Philadelphia, yep. Bucks County, the suburbs, grew up here, you know, born and raised, went to Wake Forest, came back here afterwards, and I loved it. And uh, four games into my senior season, everything's wonderful, right? Mom and dad come to every game, my older brother came to every game, and my older brother was seven years older than me, and we were like twins, even though we had that seven year difference. I mean, we spoke every day, even that I knew what he was going to say before he would say it. So, saw them, we had lost a tough game uh, in the last minutes to Clemson, had a great weekend, saw them the next morning, kissed them all goodbye, see you guys next week, it was perfect. Every Tuesday morning, my father and I spoke at 9 o'clock on the dot. We would discuss game film the Monday night before. I'd find out ticket requests for the following weekend, right? So that Tuesday morning comes and goes, and there's no call at 9 o'clock. So I knew something was up. So I called the office where my father, you know, his office spoke to his secretary. He and my brother had a business trip that day. So I just said, ah, they're, they're probably busy. Typical college kid, I went around class, 3 o'clock, football practice comes. I go to football practice. Left practice, picked up a voicemail from my oldest sister, and she said, hey, I need you to call home. So I called home after practice, hey, what's going on? Haven't talked to Dad or Tommy all day. What, you know, have you heard from them? And she couldn't speak. And my brother-in-law got on the phone, and he said, hey, you have to come home. Everybody's gone. And I was just, it, it, even still 18 years later, it still doesn't register for me. So what I had come to find out was my older brother had been battling a drug problem, cocaine, for couple of years, and the family thought it best, keep it from me, I was graduating. So you had no idea. But absolutely no clue. So this was a complete and total shock, I mean, all brand new information. My brother had gone to rehab, uh, was doing really well, had moved back in with my family, everything was going great. He had really gotten over those, those demons. And unfortunately, like always happens with people who have addiction, uh, he slipped up. He came home one night, was tied into the old crowd that he used to hang around with, and like most people, hey, I can do it one more time, it's not a big deal. Well, unfortunately, he did it one more time, and he got a bad batch of drugs that had other things in them that he had never had. Long story short, he was at my parents' place. Parents were upstairs asleep. My brother took this batch, snorted the cocaine, had a bad reaction to it. As best I can figure, one of my folks went to the bathroom in the middle of the night. So my brother, in a dark home, obviously also high, not realizing he thought there was an intruder in the house, grabbed one of the weapons we had in the home, went upstairs in darkness, fired off shots, killed both my parents, came downstairs, and then he collapsed from the drug use. Next morning, woke up, realized what he did, wrote a note, and took his own life. So I'm 21 years old, right? I'm in the middle of my senior season, getting ready to graduate, dreaming of playing professional football, and I have two older sisters at home that are an absolute mess. I have my father's business, which was around for 35 years, and I'm thinking, I'm the lone male left of this family. I have to be here for everybody. In one night. I have to take care of everybody. 
and everyone's gone in one night. So I flew home in a daze. We buried everybody, and I started to think, okay, how do I put the pieces of my life back together again? Let me stop you there because this is an entrepreneur show, and I wanted you on because you are an entrepreneur. And almost, I'm choked up thinking about it, but almost every entrepreneur has to be under pressure. Absolutely. Right? But the lessons that I want people to learn, because this is the playbook, are are critical because part of it is one, you know, it takes the consistent behavior, right? These are our habits, and there's two things that happen. You know, one, the effective communication was going on with your brother. Absolutely. Two, the consistent disease, right? In which, you know, I had to deal with with Lee Steinberg, and there's no logic to it. There's not. But there's also this one component that I talk about, show me your friends, and I'll show you your future. Yeah. You had diff- You and your brother were like twins. Absolutely. The only difference that I ever see between you two is that you had better friends. Absolutely. Absolutely. And that's true in entrepreneurship. Like, I don't understand why it's like music to me. I yeah. use this analogy. You, you hear a bad song, everybody turns off the radio music immediately because it has the wrong vibration for right. you. That's right. right. Some people love that song, but I, we can pick a song that I love and you hate. That's right. You would turn the radio off. Or if you're married, you get an argument with your wife. Yeah. But I don't understand with people, whether you're an entrepreneur, a family member, or a friend, yeah. like, that's the wrong song. It is. And we'll, we'll keep playing it all day. We won't physically listen to a song for more than a minute that we hate, yep. but we'll surround our whole life with the wrong song. Yep. And it can cost, and this is one of the worst tragedies that I've ever heard anyone surviving, meaning you. Yeah. Did you, did you ever think about taking your own life? I, I did, and I, and I know that sounds sounds crazy now. So what happened after that, uh, I went through this catharsis period where I did at the time what I thought was right, right? So I'm a big guy, I'm a football player, I need to be tough. So I'm not gonna embrace this pain, right? I'm gonna push it down, I'm gonna take care of everybody else because that's the man thing to do, that's the right thing to do. So that's exactly what I did. And no therapy, no help. Nope, I didn't need it. I came from a place of ego, yeah, yeah, right? Yeah. I was big, I was strong, I could take it. I wanted to take care of everybody else. It's one of the best things and one of the worst things I ever did. So what it led me to was a level of self-loathing. I didn't have mirrors in my home because I couldn't look at myself in the mirror. I'd see my brother looking back at me and I was disgusted with myself that I wasn't able to take care of everyone else's pain. I never stopped to think, well, how are you doing, Mike? And I get a little choked up about it, but even still to this day, like my heart is broken. It'll never heal. Um, and that's okay because of what I learned from this. So I got to a point where I was so dark and so down. I'd gotten injured playing football and uh, I was taking painkillers and they weren't enough. So I started to take more and then I mixed those with alcohol and I hid this all from my family, my friends. No one knew this. And one night, I just couldn't take the pain anymore. It was just so agonizing. I wrote a note to my family, <clears throat> took my gun, stuck it in my mouth, pulled the trigger, no hesitation. Obviously nothing happened. I looked down and the clip had fallen out of the pistol. I did not hit the release button, so I cocked it back and it just dry fired. I sat there till that morning, cried my eyes out, I dumped every pill that I had had down the toilet I detoxed myself privately on my bathroom floor, which was awful. But I tell people, I found myself on the bathroom floor. Got up the next day, I put, after I had recovered, put mirrors up in the house and started doing the right things. I started meditating, I reconnected with you, we hadn't spoken in years, and I started to find mentors, like you say, about how to live a better life. And the biggest thing that I learned out of of all this, and when I talk, I tell people this, there's two things. We have to embrace our pain. We are not set up as human beings to run towards pain. When it hurts, we go away from it. If you do that, whether it's spiritual, emotional, physical, whatever your pain is, I implore people, embrace it, wear it. If you're not fearful of it, you can use it as fuel and your pain will actually protect you. It will help you heal, but you have to embrace it. Anything that's hard in this life, there's greatness on the other side of it. So if you're a religious person, life is hard, and our reward for a hard life is heaven. Well, if that's the case, if you're going through trials and tribulations today, embrace it, really embrace it, but you have to embrace it with 100% 
brutal, honest opinions of yourself and take a look in the mirror every day and say, what am I? Am I accountable for this? And I think I made a lot of excuses in the past. I blamed my brother. I blamed the situation. I blamed everybody else. I chose to do that. I chose to not reach out and find help. I chose to not reach out and have friends. And then we are set up to do that. And it's a horrible, horrible, horrible mistake to do that. And that, that accountability of holding myself brutally honest every single day with, you know, I'm like, this is, this is your fault, right? I've been a bad worker and a bad uncle and a bad friend. And I've felt the shame and embarrassment that goes along with those things because of my behaviors and my choices. So now I look at it and I say, it's no one else's fault. It's my fault. And why am I doing that? And I'm honest with myself. And that's growth. Yeah. And that's and how I got out of this. The two lessons that are so indicative of entrepreneurs is one, the biggest mistake every entrepreneur makes is they don't ask for help. That's right. And why is that? Because the biggest mistake every human being makes is not asking for help. And it's coming from a place of ego. Of course. And the worst when you're a big six foot, whatever the hell you are, football player, that you, right. it really affects your ego. Right? For and, sure. And, the, and, the, and I'll give you the reverse of it too, because I was in the same position, yeah. right? Ego, I didn't ask for help, cost me. Luckily, I never thought about taking my own life and I didn't suffer the emotional tragedy, right? I just lost money. Right. But my ego, because I'm smaller, mm -hmm. right? I always had to prove that I was tough enough. That's, right. That's why I played football. Sure. I, I love the game, yeah. but the real ego side of it was I love the fact that everyone always would say, oh my God, how, do you, how are you playing college football? Right. Right. I love that. In my whole life, I too felt responsible for everybody. But the second lesson is, in, is interesting, and it's about being vulnerable. Yes. And it's great when someone, like Brian Arakbo doing his cupcake commercials, it's you know, being vulnerable, right? But what you learned was illumination. That the peace comes from sharing your message. 100%. Because everybody's attracted to that because they're sitting there, and unfortunately, the number one cause of death for people under 50 is suicide. That's right. Unfortunately, we don't even know the percentage of people that have thought about it yeah. or even attempted it. Yeah. And I, I believe, you know, I apologize for this, but I believe your parents, your brother, whatever energy was there, took that clip. I agree a hundred percent because it just wasn't my time. And you know, as you say, like with you playing football, we all are connected. Every one of us is connected and we all live on this crazy rock hurtling through space, right? So spinning and hurling, and, you know, but yet it appears or perceives as we're sitting still. That's right. And what I tell people, because people will hear my story and they'll say, Oh my goodness, like I could never do that. That I hate that statement. Okay. Because you can do it. Every single person that's hearing this, you're amazing in your own right. You don't know what you're capable of until you have to be capable about it. Because if you had asked me on October 29th, would I get, survive this? Absolutely not. No way. I wouldn't have done it. And even though we're all on earth and we're all sharing the same human condition, we all have our individual lives. Just because it's not a big deal in my life, it doesn't mean it's not a big deal in someone else's life. And I tell them, it's okay. Just own your stuff own it. Like if that's your life, that's okay. Just embrace it. And don't be so egotistical like I was to not say, hey, I need help. I mean, you, you've gotten it, Dave. I, how many times have I gotten a text from, hey, Dave, I just need a friend. I need to talk to you because I can be vulnerable with you. Yeah. And the, coming into Philadelphia, my favorite movie is Rocky. Yeah. Right. And I just saw Creed 2. It took me too long because sure. no one would watch it with me. And then my wife was making fun because she's like, are you crying? Yeah. Or two, she's like, I was moving in the chair. She's like, can you stop? Yeah. But she was ruining the movie for me. Right. And I was sitting there going, this is like Rocky 8. Creed 2, I think, is Rocky 8. Yeah. And it's been 43 years since sure. I was eight years old. But why do I love it is because it's the moose story. It's embrace the pain. Embrace it. You right. have to do His that. ego, like, here's a guy, the underdog. And, I get choked up because it's like, I come to Philly and that's what I think, yeah. it, you know, it's Rocky and cheesesteaks. But for me, I want more people to live like Rocky. Yeah, me too. Right? And the movies are, you know what's gonna, like I was sitting there yeah. going, I know what's gonna happen, which is not like life. Yeah. Although I will tell you, like life, I know what's gonna happen. I'm gonna have challenges to my perception. You are. And I'm gonna have to pursue my potential. And I'm yeah. gonna sit there, Dun, 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 dun. <laughs> it, it, it brings you back because it's a, it's a compelling story. I listen, you know, even even as I was coming down this morning and talking to my friend Adrian, one of the things I, I took from you was like, a Yo, challenge. Adrian. Exactly. <laughs> How funny is that, yeah. right? But I took the challenge of 
thanking the universe in the morning and the evening. I did it for 30 days, right? Because to your point, I don't think most people will do that. It is such a small thing, but for myself, that has been such a powerful, powerful tool that I've implemented into my life because it sets the morning off right, it closes the day out right. We're set up, we're always going to want more as human beings. That's just what we do. But if you appreciate what it is that you have and you stay out of that negative mentality where I rested for so many years, blaming other people, blaming the circumstances. Blame, shame, justification. Blaming the universe. Why did you do this to me? Why did this have to happen to me? And when I talk, I tell people now, that, that accident is the best thing that ever happened to me. And people like look at bankruptcy. me. bankruptcy. Exactly. They look at me like I'm crazy. They look at you like you're crazy. And I tell them, the only reason I'm able to stand here and speak to you and, and hopefully inspire you, give you any nugget of wisdom that can help you. And the only reason I'm good at anything is because I've failed at everything. By failing at everything, I've learned, okay, I learned from my mistakes. I have to grow up. I have to be a better person. I have to own my behaviors. I have to own, this is my life. There's only one of me. So I have to be me. I'm not going to change. I'm only going to evolve into the best person that I can be, Dave. Your potential. And, you know, last topic that I want to talk about, Please. and I'm going to use this as an analogy, you have to put faith in that the clip's going to fall out. You have to. Right? The clip's going to fall out. And, you know, I want to talk about that awareness because most people don't talk about the awareness of an entrepreneur. Yeah. And awareness is tied closely to faith. Are you going to put faith in the fact that when I want to put the gun in my mouth, yeah. right, when I'm ready to quit. Yep. But that's the, the analogy. Can I, instead of putting faith in that the bullet's coming to end it all, right. that, nah, the clip's, the, the universe is going to move me in the direction I'm supposed to. It's going to raise my awareness. And I think too many times the clip falls out for people yeah. and they're not aware that they're in a, a greater place. Like, there's a higher power. There's a higher source of energy that we can deny it we can resist it, but if we accept it and illuminate it and say, you know what, I'm just going to trust the clip's going to fall out. Every time I want to put this in my mouth, yep. the clip's going to fall out. That's right. I put faith in the direction that I'm, I put the faith in what I do want, not in what I don't want. For you, I really want to, as a last question, understand when the clip fell out. Yeah. Because to me, I had that catalyst, right? I had sure. to file bankruptcy. I, I realized I lost my mom's house. That was like yeah. the clip falling out. Absolutely. Because right? my whole life was about my identity to being money. Your clip falls out. Talk me through the awareness of what you're sitting there going, wait a second, yeah. I'm on the wrong road. Right. So I ultimately, and what you say is so true, and I couldn't agree with it more. There's life ultimately comes down, I, I think, when we really break it down for entrepreneurs, for people who aren't entrepreneurs, it comes down to simple yes and no choices, right? That clip falls out. So I can look at it one of two ways. Thank God, I'm here for a greater purpose. It's not my time. Or I can't even kill myself. Right. Boy, I'm a screw up, right? There's the, and those are really the only two outcomes of that. So for me, when that hit, it, it, it was a shock. And it initially started out where I had some self-loathing. Like, did you really just pull the trigger? Like, you can't even do that right. But then I stopped like you're speaking about, and I started to illuminate what it was that I was going through. And that's where I really started to take accountability for myself. It wasn't that I wanted to die. I love my life. I have a great family. I coach kids now. I'm with my niece and nephew. I love it. I am the happiest guy in the world. Inspired like tons of kids. What I wanted, I wanted the pain to stop. I couldn't take it anymore. My heart was just broken, and it was so much for me to take. I just couldn't do it anymore, and that's all I wanted. I wanted the pain to stop. So what I tell people, for me... How do you realize it was the drugs and alcohol, though, changing your perception? Because, because you, most people couldn't just go cold turkey, lie on a right. and floor. It, well, and, and for me, what it was, I thought about my brother. See, I had the... Uh, other people hear the story, and some people will judge him, and that's okay. I understand where they're coming from. They don't know him, right. but I did. And I knew that this horrible accident, and that's all it was, was a horrible accident. That was not my brother, right? This was drug use. So for me... I'm making these crazy decisions and I'm popping Vicodin and Oxycontin and drinking. That's not me either, right? That is me running away from the reality of my heart is broken and I'm not strong enough to take it on my own. I had to ask for help. So I started to ask for help and I talked to a therapist and I started to talk to friends and I started to give talks about the accident because that gave it meaning. Mm -hmm. And I could change the life of somebody else through my pain. So what dawned on me was, 
this happened to you. It doesn't define me. It is something that happened to me. What's going to find me, what do I do with it now? How do you add value to it and give it away? Correct. Because this is a horrible accident that took place, but I know I can add tremendous, tremendous value for other people by sharing this story because it will stop them. It'll help them make a different decision. It'll make them feel not as alone. And for me, that's how I applied it. The final piece for entrepreneurial is that really, I think, and I was talking to my friend about this this morning, I don't believe in backup plans. I hate them. I remember you telling me that. Yeah. If you have a backup plan, it's going to stop you from giving 100% because the moment it gets hard, the moment it gets tough, the moment it hurts, by and large, we're going to cry and complain and we're going to divert to the backup plan because it's easier. Don't do that. If I had a backup plan for what I went through in 2001, I don't think I would be here. My plan was, this happened to me, I have no choice but to just deal with it. So whatever your plan is, put 100% into it and don't worry about the universe. You say this all the time and I love it. The universe will catch you just like it caught my clip, yeah. just like it caught all That's the mistakes that I've made. Let go of the brain. Let it go. Yeah, exactly. All right, real quick, I, lo I love this. If you were just going to give one summary piece of advice for any, because it's such an epidemic for anyone that's using, abusing drugs and alcohol and think, think about taking their own life, yeah. what would be that piece of advice to help? Or anyone that's going to quit because this is for entrepreneurs. Because it's the same thing. First Quitting, and, dying. It's, it's all it's the, the same ultimate thing. quit. Right? Exactly. No matter how you do it, there's two things. Number one, this is going to be hard for some people to hear. Own your behavior. This is you. It's you. You might be depressed, clinically depressed. You might need medicine. You might be sad. You might be all these things. But if you're not taking accountability for what you need, it's you. It is you. So you have to be brutally honest with yourself and say, I'm tired of this. I'm not going to do this. I have a lot of things to live for. And if you don't, here's the other thing. Just know this, and I say this to myself every day. Nothing stays the same. Hard times do not last. They always stop. Everyone, everyone loves, oh, Rome wasn't built in a day. No one, ever, no one ever talks about the other side. Rome also didn't fall in a day. Everything takes commitment, which is what you started out with. If you want to get better, get better. If you can't do it on your own, there's no shame in that. I couldn't do it on my own. Ask Just for ask for help. We all have these same conditions. People are amazing. You, people are so, so, so wonderful. When you humble yourself and you say, I can't do this on my own, would you help me? I just don't think that people are gonna turn your back on you. I just don't. I agree. No better word said, accountability, and of course, ask for help, and don't forget, do good deeds, be kind to your future self by being of service. Always. It's always a pleasure to be of service Appreciate to you, Mike. It. Love you. This is uh, entrepreneur Dave Meltzer with Mike Mooseberger. Burger? <laughs> close enough. 15 years of being friends to say his name's close enough. Moose works just fine. <laughs> this is Dave Meltzer with The Moose here with Entrepreneurs, The Playbook. If you've enjoyed this episode of The Playbook, learn more valuable lessons right over here.